Hello, and welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon, on this, the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. My name is Charles Manti, and on behalf of the congregation, I wish to welcome you to worship. Today, our prelude is Reflections from Partida on Lost uns Erfreuen by Charles Callahan. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We, we confess, confess that, that we are captive, captive to sin and, and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We have return from, from your, your loving embrace, embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, God has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to, to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. October 4th is the day in which we commemorate St. Francis of Assisi, who died in 1226. This opening hymn, All Creatures Worship God Most High, is a hymn set to his words. It is number 835. So 
worship God most high. Sound every voice in earth and sky. Alleluia, alleluia. Sing, brother, son, in splendor bright. Sing, sister, moon, and stars of night. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, you. with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our 
the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. be with you and also with you let us pray 
Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. first reading for the day is from Isaiah chapter 5. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and the people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The psalm for the day is Psalm 80, verses 7 through 15. We'll read it all together. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. 
You cleared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea, and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and tend this vine, Preserve what your right hand has planted. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 3. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I have had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this, or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the forest harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. 
The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the children's sermon. I'm glad you are with me today. Today, I'm in my garden with my tomatoes. Yes, I still have quite a few tomatoes left, as you can see. Gardens are a lot of fun, but they are also a lot of work. As you know, uh, you have to plant the seedlings or the seeds, and then you have to water them, and then you have to weed them. It's a lot of work, but the best part is when the harvest comes. These cherry tomatoes, I call these God's candy. I love these. Mmm, so sweet. Jesus tells a story of a garden. Actually, it's a vineyard. A vineyard I don't know all that much about, but it's kind of similar. And he tells a story about how some of the people who ran, who, who worked in the garden, didn't give the owner the produce that they were supposed to, that he was supposed to be due. It would be like someone coming in the middle of the night and taking all my tomatoes. I would, I would not be very happy when that happened, when, if someone did that. Would you if someone stole plants out of your garden? Well, Jesus tells this story uh, for a specific reason, but for us, I think we can know that God's uh, want us always to be treated fairly and to honor those who, who come from God, especially Jesus himself, who was killed uh, on a cross, uh, but was raised in glory. We thank God for the glory of gardens, of creation, and to stay especially, we thank God, I thank God for a man by the name of Francis of Assisi, who loved animals, who loved the world, who loved creation. Uh, we are indeed blessed and encouraged by such people of history. So. Uh, enjoy your garden if you don't have a garden, or enjoy the food that you are blessed with, for it is all of God's creation. Thank you for joining me today. Let us pray. Merciful God, in these ever-changing times, we know that we can rely upon you as our rock and redeemer. So now come to us through your word that our hearts might be strengthened, that our faith may be filled, that our hope will be strengthened as well. In Christ's name, amen. Paul is proud. Paul is proud of the fact that if anyone wants to get in some kind of macho contest over his Jewishness, he would win. He's got it all. He writes, If anyone has, else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Paul was a proud man. But something happened to Paul. He met Christ, or I should say, Christ met him. On the road to Damascus, as he was zealous to throw more so-called Christians in jail, Christ met him, and his life was forever changed. 
In short, he says that when compared with Christ, all of these things count for nothing. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and regard them as rubbish. It's hard to convey the intensity of Paul's emotion through translation. For example, that word rubbish, as in I regard them as rubbish, should be literally translated excrement. That's the nice way of saying it. Paul's encounter with Christ has led him to treat his entire heritage and all his accomplishments as excrement. Eugene Peterson in the message translated as dog dung. It is hard to overstate how shocking this choice of words is here, especially to those who valued their heritage. Furthermore, if we take his words literally, Paul would even maintain that in the ledger of his life, these things, his heritage and his accomplishments, are debits rather than credits, loss rather than gain. Why does Paul say this? Because he is acknowledging that trusting in himself and what he has done becomes a loss when it stands in the way of claiming righteousness that is a gift of God that comes through faith. These are scary words. They imply that whatever reason I might have for boasting as a good Christian, as a male, as white, as American, as middle class, as Lutheran, anything I might pride myself for, earned or unearned, could be that which separates me from Christ because of pride. And Paul will have none of it. When it comes to where we place our trust, it is very easy to substitute our accomplishments, our good deeds, our heritage for the humble acceptance of God's grace. Now, I won't argue the fact that it is a good thing to come from a line of active and faithful Christians. It is a good and necessary thing for every Christian to do works of mercy on behalf of others. But these do not make us right with God. We do these things out of love for what Christ has first done for us. Throughout the rest of the passage, I'm amazed at Paul's intense love for God. I want to know Christ. I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus made it his own. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the heavenly call in God, in Christ Jesus. It's as if Paul is a runner in a race, continually sprinting toward the precious, precious treasure of love found in God. He reminds me very much of the man we commemorate this day, St. Francis of Assisi. His simple passion for Christ still reverberates throughout the world. Growing up in Assisi in an emerging middle-class family, Francis was a bit of a playboy, he was the life of the party. He wanted to be somebody big, a knight, a hero for Assisi. On a military campaign, he was captured by a neighboring town, and in his imprisonment, he began to wake up. He woke up to the love of God. He called it Lady Poverty. In some ways, this is like Paul's desire for Christ's suffering and death. Lady poverty was the symbol of the paradoxes of the gospel. Richness in poverty, life in death, strength in weakness, peace in conflict and temptation, fullness in emptiness. Francis embraced Lady poverty, rejected his father's wealth, and then faced his first test. At the very bottom of the very structured class system of his day were the lepers. Francis had a particular revulsion toward those with leprosy. He panicked when he saw such a person. Then one day on the road below Assisi, 
he did one of those surprising things that only the power of Jesus' Spirit could explain. He reached out and not only touched such a one of the least of these, Francis embraced this leper and kissed him. It was a Damascus Road experience for him. The Franciscan scholar Murray Bodo writes of this moment, that kiss, this reaching out of the lips directed his heart for the first time towards someone worth loving other than himself. He began that day to breathe out more than to breathe in, to turn outwards rather than inwards, to do rather than think about doing. Francis spent the next two years nursing victims of leprosy and repairing three small churches. He soon attracted others who joined him in poverty and preaching. Like Paul, Francis wanted to deliberately imitate Jesus' way of life. They were called the Order of Lesser Brothers. But on this day, we ought not only to remember the ardent passion of St. Francis, we must lift up the fervent faith of Claire. Claire, who would become Saint Claire of Assisi, happened to hear Francis preaching, and like Paul, her world was turned upside down. She was noble-born. It was her family's intent that she would marry an aristocrat in order to preserve and reinforce her family's power. Her uncles used social convention and even force of arms to persuade her to accept this fate. But at the age of 18, Claire was able to escape the chains of conformity and comfort to follow Francis, the poor little one. This was a clash of two cultures, the gospel and personal conscience on one side and the dictates of social class with its tyranny of success on the other. Claire's family members were good Christians but Claire's break with their plans for her humiliated them. They accused her of betrayal when in fact what she was doing was revealing their own inability to live the authenticity of their faith. We face this same choice today, whether to follow the criteria of social success and pride or the message of Jesus. With the message of Jesus, we embrace humility, uncertain social achievement, even rejection. It is deeply countercultural message as we head into the presidential election. Richard Rohr has said, when you become little enough, naked enough, and honest enough, then you will ironically find that you are more than enough. This is the wisdom of the gospel. And it is surely the Franciscan emphasis. And this place, at this place of poverty and freedom, you have nothing to prove and nothing to protect. Paul, Francis, Claire shared a common ardor for Christ and his way. May we be instilled with this same passion for the love of God in Christ Jesus. It is in this passion grounded in humility that the world and our very lives will be changed. By happenstance, I came across another love poem by Jacopone de Todi. He comes from out of the Franciscan tradition, born only a few years after Francis died. It's a poem ablaze with passion for God, a poem that echoes the life of St. Paul, St. Francis, and St. Clair. Once I spoke, now I am mute. I could see once, but now I am blind. Oh, the depths of the abyss in which, though silent, I speak. Fleeing, I am bound. Descending, I rise. Holding, I am held. Outside, I am within. I pursue and am pursued. Love without limits. Why do you drive me mad and destroy me in this blazing furnace? Amen.
make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, died, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, there seems so much darkness around us, yet because you love us and are continually, continually calling your wayward children to return, we dare to pray to you, Lord, have mercy. Enlighten your church that we may be a beacon to those languishing in darkness. Help us to care for those who have lost homes and possessions in the recent fires. Reveal to us ways you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. May our humble service bear fruit in your realm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for your creation, especially Francis of Assisi, whom we commemorate today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Curb the impulses of greed and pride that leads us to take advantage of others. Grant that world leaders, especially our president and elected leaders, seek the fruits of the kingdom for the good and welfare of all people. We pray for the people of Armenia and Azerbaijan, where fighting has once again erupted. We pray for the nations where there has been recent upsurge in the coronavirus, Israel, Spain, Brazil, England, and Scotland. Grant healing to all those affected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. 
Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and spirit. We call to mind those who are struggling today, especially Doreen, Tom and Breda, Ken, Jennifer, Ella, Don and Susan, Craig, Pat, Karen, Roe, Dana, Charlene, Mason, Linda, Beverly, Sunny, Vic, Ruth, Rolf, Tim, Harry, Maureen, Bud and Jeannie, Peyton, and our President and First Lady. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those unemployed and those underemployed, for the homeless, for the overwhelmed, for the marginalized, for the abused. We pray for an awakening to the realization of where our secret pride harms the bodies of others, that racial and economic justice might prevail. Be with the school children, teachers, and families as they struggle to learn in this time of physical distancing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you for the saints who teach us to live faithfully in your vineyard. May our chorus join theirs until our labor is complete. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And also also with with you. you. At this time, in preparation for our Gratitude Sunday in a couple of weeks, we will hear a word of gratefulness from Tanya Schneider. I'm Tanya Schneider. And a couple things that I am grateful for right now, in particular, our family. Uh, My family is not geographically close, but we are very close personally. And each day, I believe we are in contact with each other through our thoughts and through our prayers. And I very much appreciate that. The second thing I'm grateful for is, is really where I live and my home. It allows me the space to get out and be with nature and appreciate what's around me. And especially in this time of COVID, I've certainly have appreciated where I live much more than I did in the past. And the third thing I'm grateful for is God's peace. And it's something that daily is important to me and It basically kind of helps me get through each day and all that I'm experiencing right now. We sing our theme song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, 733.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet, nourish us with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Heaven is here and earth, and the space is thin between them. Distance may divide, but Christ's promise unites those of us still bounded by time and those who are now blessed by eternity. Let heaven be glad. Let the whole earth cry glory. Heaven is here and earth, and the church above and below is one. Peter and the disciples are here, and Paul, Martha, and all the Marys, St. Francis and St. Clair, Mother Teresa and Martin Luther King, Jr., the saints from far back and those who left us not long ago, and only sight prevents us from seeing them, for they are one with us on the other side. Let heaven be glad. Let the whole earth cry glory. Blessing and honor and glory and power be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus was always the guest in the homes of Peter and Jairus, Martha and Mary, Joanna and Susanna and Zacchaeus. He was always the guest. At the meal table of the wealthy, where he pled the case for the poor, he was always the guest. But here at this table, he is the host. Those who wish to serve him must first be served by him. Those who want to follow him must first be fed by him. Those who would wash his feet must first let him make them clean. For this is the table where God intends us to be nourished. This is the time when Christ can make us new. So come, you who are tired and in need of rest, those of you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a better life, for a fairer world. Jesus Christ, who has sat at our tables, now invites us to be guests at his table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, for you have made us your own through Christ Jesus and given us a new righteousness based on faith. You created the entire universe. The sky tells of your glory. Day and night reveal the genius of your ways. You brought your people out of slavery and gave them your laws and commandments that they might be rich in spirit and clear in vision. Though we repeatedly rejected your ways and destroyed your messengers, you sent your son to us to renew heaven's call. Though the crowds recognized him as a prophet, those who coveted his inheritance seized and killed him. But you raised him from the dead, and now through the power of his resurrection he stands as the cornerstone of righteousness, the first fruits of the kingdom, and the incomparable prize toward which we press. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. We sing the Lamb of God. Communion hymn, Jesus Loves Me, number 595. power of Christ's body and blood reach deep into your heart, your mind, and your body to heal your wounds. Amen. 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 We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending song, the Lord now sends us forth, number 538.
Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our postlude today is by Charles Callahan. It is Toccata from Partita on Lost uns Erfreuen. <laughs> 